In this exercise, we're going to use the Curve Line tool in Microsoft Paint to create some geometric patterns or flower designs. And to do this, we're going to use a template of a circle. So I'd like you to select the Circle Drawing tool from the Shapes area. We're going to use the size 3 pixels of a line. And we're going to create, a, as well as we can, an exact circle. In other words, uh, not an ellipse. To do that, we're going to start in this corner, hold the shift key down, and draw our circle. Now, we don't have to be too big, but um, our resulting image is going to be somewhat smaller inside this circle. So I'm going to let go of the mouse, and then I'll let go of the shift key, and that's our circle. I want you to notice, as I zoom in, some of the patterns that the pixels make. In other words, this top side, as the, as the pixels of paint show up, creates a flat spot. We're going to use that flat spot and this perceived flat spot on the side to put little tick marks on our image. And that'll help us line up our curve line tool drawing. So um, to do that, uh, back to paintbrush, and I choose, I prefer to choose a, a different color for my tick mark. So I'll place that here, here, to eight different um, sides of our circle. That's mostly to, to remind us or help us find it when we're drawing our, our pattern. Okay, with that done, now we need to find the exact circle, or the exact center of our circle. I'll reduce the zoom back down to 100, and we'll use this um, navigation tool in the lower left-hand corner. This defines the pixels from the upper left-hand corner where the, uh, where the cursor is, or the mouse. So, this line up here, if I put it right in the center, I, what I'm doing is I'm measuring from the top to the bottom, so the number that changes was the second number, that's 74, and this line is from the top to the bottom, which is 98. So if I bring this out to 98, so the first number is how far from the edge we are and this looks like it's 292 and the center of this is 270 so if I want the exact circle of or center of my circle it's going to be 292 by 270 or so right there so I'll put a little mark there and now I'm ready to begin we'll choose the curve line tool from the shapes area and I'll use my um, original color black. What we want to do is use the curve line tool. I'll, I'll prepare this and let you practice this off to the side. A curve line tool in its function um, has several clicks that are required. The first click is when you push the mouse button down. That defines the starting point. As you pull the mouse away, holding the mouse left mouse button down, you can choose where your destination point or your end of the line is. When you let go of the mouse, the mouse up, that defines the end of the line. But we're not done. When we, we have one more click to place um, for the beginning. This, the second click down defines the direction and magnitude the direction goes from the first, the first click. And once I define that, I let go and I have one more click to do that I'm required to do. The second click, or the third click rather, um, defines from what direction the line comes from or goes to the last dot or the end of our line. And that also can define the magnitude and direction of that line. So with that we can create almost any kind of curve line including one that overlaps on itself. But for our purposes we're going to try, oh by the way I'll, I'll let go now. So that sets our line and our line is done. For our purposes, we're going to make this point and this point, the beginning and the end, be in the same place. So to do that, if I click down and move my mouse ever so slightly until I see color, I have a beginning and an end right there. I still owe or have two more clicks. I'll just do one here and one here. And as you can see, I've made, well, uh, a balloon. I suppose if I were to make that same pattern, only I put the drop, the two clicks at the bottom, I will have made a, a teardrop or a raindrop. 
and working that same pattern on the side I would make something that could be shaped like a, an eye. But for us we want something that's repeatable. So we're going to use this pattern using a technique which I've just demonstrated. Click in the center, move your mouse just ever so slightly to get uh, the two points established, let go, and then click on the first tick mark at the top. And we're going to skip the tick mark at 45 degrees and go to the next one at 90. And we want to actually click in the center of the line because we want to be uniform. And there's our first. If I put my mouse back in the center, and you know we can zoom in on this, I think that might be smart. Just a little bit uh, as we do these. I'll turn the zoom back off so I can better control this initial line. So I'll click here. There, if I establish my initial line, I'll click here in the center of this line. I'll go uh, 90 degrees out. There's another one. Draw my line here and here. I click away. The reason for clicking away is that Microsoft Paint allows you to draw an image and adjust where that image is. I'll use Control Z to place it. Um, adjust where that image is before you make it permanent or to use a Photoshop term before you flatten it. And by flattening it what it does is it makes it permanent in that location. So now we have our four pieces. That kind of looks like a clover. I'd like to continue this pattern so I'm going to click back in the center to make my initial mark and then I'll do um, the offset at, at 45 degrees. There's my line. And I'll continue that for the for all the way around. And I believe I have one more to do. So Start my base and place my marks. Okay, now that's that's a nice pattern. Um, I can use that pattern, but uh, I'm going to add one more layer or level on this just to show you the other option that you have by not skipping a tick mark. So I think I'll switch my color to, to red and I'll go back to the center and this time. I will go from one tick mark to the next 45 degrees and I'll do that all the way around. I think you see the pattern. Let's see what it looks like when it's done. And one more and I think it's done. Zoom back out to normal. Now I can color in these various shapes and uh, to delete my circle I can um, so certainly select this, move it away or pour paint in this, uh, white paint into the circle and now I have a, another geometric padding, pattern using the curve line tool.